What's up everybody, it's Charles. As you can see, we have a ton of parts out here on the workbench today, and I'm gonna be replacing a bunch of plastic trim on the R32. As you guys may or may not know, the Mark IV interior plastic was extremely fragile, so over 15 years in the Florida sun, uh, it gets really brittle and starts to break, so we're gonna be replacing a bunch of this stuff today. The only thing I think we might not get to is rewiring the ignition switch and possibly replacing the steering column trim. What we are gonna replace is the lower kick panels on the driver's side, surround around the battery, bellows for the sunroof, the bezel around the radio, the window switches on the driver's side, the surround for the headlight assembly, and the front center console. So a lot of parts to put on. Most of this stuff is super easy. Let's jump in the car and get to it. First thing, I'm gonna remove both front seats. This is not a necessary step, but it's gonna give us a little bit more room to work. Let's go ahead and start with the lower center console and work our way up. Now, some of these parts are just completely hanging off of the trim, so we can just go ahead and pull those off. We'll start by removing the front storage tray, or ashtray as it may have been called at the time. First, we'll remove the little red cup. Then there's one T20 screw underneath it. Go ahead and take that out. Push the tray back and then slide it up and forward. We don't wanna pull it though, we wanna be careful. There's a plug for the 12 volt outlet and one wiring harness retainer. Next, we'll remove the shifter boot and trim. Push it very gently forward, lift up on the rear, and then slide it all the way up. Now you can take this off if you want to by either cutting the clamp or removing the worm clamp like I have. I'm just gonna leave it in and work around it. To remove the console itself, there's five or so screws that need to come out. Two in the rear on the sides, two in the front on the sides, and one right below the AC control. Very gently push the console forward a bit, then lift it up at the back side of the console and slide it out. Let's go ahead and get this AC trim off and this other brush trim piece. Next up, let's remove the glove box assembly. You got three T20 screws at the top, three T20 screws at the bottom. We need to remove the side cover trim. Then we can go ahead and pull the glove box away. Now you wanna be careful pulling this away because there is a connector for the light inside the glove box. Next up, we will do the lower driver side trim. Remove the side cover trim, just like we did on the passenger side. You have three screws down at the bottom to remove. Pull the outer trim away. Now, if your trim is in good condition, it'll take a little bit of effort to pull away. Mine pretty much falls off because it's mostly broken. Now, for the inner one closer to the radio, there should be another screw right here. However, shockingly, my trim is broken, so it doesn't have that screw. But we want to make sure we pull this inner trim straight back because it does clip into the bezel around the radio. Next up, the AC control head held in with four T20 screws. Be really careful here because the body of the control head does get pretty weak. One corner is broken on mine, so you may not want to use a power tool here. Next, let's unplug it and set it to the side. If you're having trouble getting to the connectors, use a plastic trim tool or something like that to push the lock in and help you release the electrical connector. There's a lot of dirt and dust in here, so it's not a bad idea while we have this out to go ahead and clean it. Next up, let's go ahead and pull this radio. Now, this is an older style radio that does require radio removal keys to get it out. This is not just a VW thing. A lot of other manufacturers had this style of release for the radio. I've tried a bunch of different kinds of radio keys, and this one from Sir Tool is the best one that I've found. Of course, I'll drop a link down in the description for you guys if you wanna check it out. First, we're gonna slide the tool apart, fold out the long, thin keys, put the key in the slot so that it locks just like this, do the same thing on the other side, and then we can just go ahead and slide the radio out. And of course, we'll need to disconnect the quad lock, the big electrical connector on the back of the radio, and the antenna connector. To take the radio removal tool off of the radio, just push the spring in and that'll allow it to release. Now that the radio's out, we can go ahead and remove this busted up bezel trim. You got four screws holding it on, take those out, and then get the wiring out of the way. This should be pretty straightforward. I have some aftermarket stuff installed in my car. You won't have to worry about that if you don't. Now that we have the bezel out, we need to remove this little trim piece, AKA the super secret storage compartment. There's just two retention springs that hold it in push the spring in and you can pop the trim right out. Next, we can reinstall the bezel. I like to put the brushed trim on first. There's little dowels on the trim that lock into place on the bezel. So you have to start them low and then slide them up. Also looks like one of our screw retainers fell out when we took the trim off. So we'll go ahead and put that back in. Install your secret compartment. It just snaps into place. Put your four T20 screws in, route your wiring harness in the proper way. 
the quad lock goes on the driver's side and the antenna goes on the passenger side if you have a factory radio. Get that stuff all plugged in and then go ahead and install your radio. Once the connectors are plugged into the radio, all you gotta do is just slide the radio in place and you should hear a click when it's properly secured. All right, so here's our Climatronic unit and as you can see, we have one of our tabs broken off. Not terribly surprising given the condition of all the other plastic trim. Before we start putting all that other stuff back together, let's go ahead and get this glued back on. I'm gonna use some super glue here. I like this kind because it has a little brush in it, but use whatever you think is best. This stuff's worked pretty well for me over the years. First thing I'm gonna do is I wanna test fit this piece, find out exactly how it's gonna go. This is pretty easy because the corner has to go out, so it's gonna go just like that. Now what we'll do, get a little sandpaper, clean it up a little bit, both sides, a little dab of glue here. We'll glue this back on first. This dries pretty quick. You just gotta hold it for 20 or 30 seconds. All right, now that that's pretty well dry, glue the rest of this down. You don't need a ton here. Now we'll hold it for our 30 seconds while that glue dries. While you're holding that, you wanna be really careful not to touch the face of this because you don't wanna get super glue on it. If you want to really go the extra mile, take some two-part epoxy and epoxy behind it. That'll make it even stronger. All right, now that we got our bezel and everything in, let's work on the other side. We'll start with our glove box. Make sure you plug your light in, and if you have an air-conditioned glove box, make sure you put the hose on it. All right, once you're plugged in, let's go ahead and lift the glove box up into place. There we go. Get our six screws in. We got three on the inside at the top and then three along the bottom. Now, notice that we have a couple of these clips left over. Our new trim pieces come with them. We need to get these out. So you can see our clip right here. The easiest way I found to remove those is to take a pair of bent pliers like this, go on the outside of the clip, get up high on it, and then rock it out. And that usually works pretty well and you can remove them without damaging them. I like to save these because you never know when you're gonna need an extra one. Let's start with our trim closest to the passenger side. Here's our new clips that we just removed on the old trim. And we're just gonna take this piece and slide it right on in. We'll put this screw in right here. Next, we'll take our outer trim. Go ahead and install that. For installing this trim, you need to kind of install it this way. There's these two tabs right here that go into those two holes. We need to make sure we get all that lined up. Then we'll go ahead and put our three screws in at the bottom. All right, there is our new lower driver's side right here. You don't see any of that bezel, but at least now our brushed trim fits properly. Glove box sits a little bit nicer. Let's go ahead and do our bezel around the uh, headlight switch next. All right, this next trim piece is super duper easy. We're going to be replacing this vent housing right here. First thing we need to do is take the headlight switch out. The way we do that is we actually push it in, rotate it just past the O, and then pull it out of that housing. Then what we'll do is we'll disconnect it, push our connector back in a little bit. There's one T20 screw that we need to get out. Next, we need to take our dimmer switch out. I just went ahead and reached back behind it. That allows us to take the whole housing out. We can disconnect it, and we just push the switch out. Mine's actually missing one of these metal tabs that's supposed to hold it in. All right, here is our new housing, looking all fresh. It is actually a little different than the one that we're taking out. This one has the lights in it, which our other one doesn't. We can tap into our interior lighting and wire this up if we want to. I'm gonna wait until I actually have the other ones that are illuminated, and then we'll go ahead and do it then. First thing we'll do is we will drop in our dimmer switch. I wasn't able to find another metal retainer, so we're just gonna install it like this. It actually holds in okay. Next time I hit up a pull apart, I'll pick up another one. We'll plug in our dimmer. You see that metal clip just fell right out. Tuck our wiring back behind the dash. Go ahead and clip that into place. Pull our wiring for our headlight switch through. Put our one T20 in. Get our headlight switch, plug it in, install it. 
And then in order to get it out of this sort of service position, just go ahead and turn it off, tuck our wires back in, go ahead and put our side cover trim back on. All right, there we go, that's nice and easy. Let's move on to whatever the heck we're replacing next. All right, next up, let's get these window switches replaced. There is a handle right here on the driver's door with a trim piece behind the brushed piece. We need to remove that. So what I like to do is take a pocket screwdriver and at the bottom go up in between and push the inner piece back. That'll allow us to lift it right up. So you're going right up here between this plastic piece and the brush piece. Next, we just have to simply lift this up and it should pop right up, nice and easy. Disconnect our electrical connector. We have three Phillips head screws for the switches. They call them Phillips head, but I like to use my pocket screwdriver to take them out. One, two, and three. Here is our trim. Here's our new freshy switches. I went ahead and cleaned this out a little bit. Uh, good time to do that since you have the switches out. Super easy. We just set the switches in. Go ahead and screw them down. Noticing that my housing's broken right here, so I might actually put a little dab of glue or something to make sure that switch holds properly. Also, I'm not gonna go crazy with tightening it. Plug her in, not a bad idea to make sure they work. <laughs> and then go ahead and snap the pull handle down. Get our inner piece right here. This just goes right back into there. Snaps in, and that's it. All right, next up, the new front center console, which I'm really excited about. Let's go ahead and get this old girl installed. Watch our shifter boot here. All right. There we go. I can already tell you the difference between these two trims is going to drive me crazy, but we'll get that worked out a different time. We get our little metal bar in here. This is what our ashtray screws down to. All right, go ahead and plug our ashtray in, get our wire grommet on. Hopefully this will allow our ashtray to actually stay in place. That was one thing that was driving me bonkers. There we go. Outstanding. Get our ashtray in. Ha! And we can open and close it without it coming all apart. Outstanding. Very excited about that. Put our foamy foam around the shifter bezel back in. Get our shifter back installed. Boom. Get our final screw for the center piece here. We'll get our lower trim down here installed. All right, how awesome does that look? We gotta get our AC control head in, but we first have to swap these little retainers for the screws over from our old bezel to our new one. This is probably something you wanna do before you put that new bezel in because I think it'll be a little bit easier. All we have to do to get these out is just pry them out with a screwdriver. You don't wanna expand them really. That can make them not fit right. The easiest way to do it is to take a pocket screwdriver right at the top and just pry it out. Everything here is brittle, so it'll probably just break. Go ahead and put these back in. One, two, three, four. Now what we can do is we can take our control head, plug it in. These plugs are all different size connectors, so you really can't get it wrong. I guess you could get it wrong, but you'd have to work way harder to get it wrong than to get it right. So if you're struggling, make sure you're plugging the connectors in the right way. Or just look at this video and you have tan, red, small black, big black. Now we'll take our control head, we'll set it in its location. Go ahead and screw this down. I'm gonna do this by hand because we had the broken ones. So we don't wanna cause any, uh, any more broken parts. So we can be a little more gentle with, uh, with these by hand than we probably would have using power tools. Be extra careful with the one we glued. Next, we will install our trim around the Climatronic. That just snaps right on. And we're done. Oh no, we're not done. Next up, let's get this battery cover on. Now this is the piece that surrounds the battery. So we'll go ahead and remove that. And the reason I'm replacing this is one of the tabs is broken. So this is our cover. It sort of slides together like this. And this tab right here clips into this part of the cover. So the cover doesn't sit right. We're gonna go ahead and replace it. First, let's remove our fuse panel, slip this piece off. Next, we'll go ahead and disconnect our ground strap. 
pull our ground cable off, do the same thing for our power side. At the back of the battery box, there is a little cover that you need to slide off. It slides down to lock in, so we just slipped it up, back, and out. When I replace batteries on Mark IVs, I usually bungee this thing out of the way. Let's take this one air duct off. We don't need to take both of them off. This will be the only one we're gonna remove. Slide that up. Gives us super easy access to our 13 millimeter bolt. There's our 13 millimeter bolt. Get our battery hold down bracket out from in there. Now we can lift our battery up and out. Pull this battery cover away. You can see it's broken in multiple spots. Good opportunity to clean the grounds underneath the battery tray. If you remember that old tech line thing. Here's our new one. This just simply clips in, super easy. There we go. We'll go ahead and install this piece now. Let's put our battery back in. Go ahead and bolt the battery down to our positive terminal. Go ahead and do the negative terminal. Put the fuse panel retainer back in. That snaps in nicely. Snap the fuse panel on. Put our duct back in. Two Phillips head back in. And now we'll go ahead and put our battery cover back on. Wipe it down a little bit. And now we just replaced a part that no one will ever notice wasn't in perfect condition. Nobody will ever see. And other than you guys that watch this and me, no one will ever know we bothered to do that. Waste of time, probably, but you know what? I feel better about it. Next up, putting the seats back in. Now that we have the seats back in, we are going to install these little accordion looking trim covers for the sunroof. So we're looking at our sunroof track right here. Our sunroof is in the vent position. Our little rubber trim piece clips in in a couple of spots. It has lower clips and upper clips. It has a lower clip at the front and the back down here and upper clips at the top here, here, and it needs to hook back in at a little dowel all the way at the back right here. I like to start on the bottom at the back down here and slip it into place. It's gonna go in a little channel and back. That then allows us to line up the front at the bottom, snap it into place. Then I like to go to the back at the top. You see our little tab here. This part slides into it. And then this round part here clips here and this square clip clips on that dowel there. So we roll it into place and then we just snap it in. That's all you need to do. The other side is exactly the same. So you just do the same procedure on the other side. Of course, we're gonna close our sunroof and make sure that it closes properly. And now we have our fancy cool guy trim installed. Next up, we are going to be replacing the struts for the rear hatch. I already did the one for the hood. These are the ones we're going to be replacing it with. Yes, the OEM ones are silver or chrome. These are not. This is a place where I'm actually just fine with these versus the pretty expensive OEM ones. First, we want to drop the parcel cover. That just simply unhooks. Now, there's 150,000 ways to remove these. I like to use a bent pick like this and go up underneath the spring and just pry the spring away. And now push up a little bit on the trunk or the hood or the hatch and pull the strut away. Now you need to hold the hatch up, otherwise it's gonna come flying down on you. Go ahead and make sure this is tight. Mine was actually loose. All right, we'll take a 13 millimeter wrench and just snug it up a little bit. Now for the top side, it might actually be easier to get a flat blade screwdriver. Slide it under the clip, pry the clip away, and we just pull the strut right off. Going back together is a little bit easier. We'll take our new ball cup, and just snap the cup over the ball, just like that, and go ahead and snap the other side in. All right, after you get the new struts on, go ahead and put our parcel cover back on and make sure that the trunk shuts. So here is our old parts from everything that we replaced. One thing I wanna mention real quick, when you guys replace stuff like this, if there's any kind of screw retainers or anything like this right here, take them off and keep them. You never know when you might need something like that. Don't just throw them out in the trash. So we're gonna take these off. We'll hold on to those. I may actually attempt to do some refinishing on these parts just to see if we can get them happy again 
If not, they'll end up in the trash too. Now the one job we didn't do was do the ignition switch wiring and the clamshell around the steering column. I'm gonna save that for a separate video because I think the wiring of the ignition switch deserves a little more attention. Now when I see all these parts sitting right here on the bench, I think, wow, that was a crazy amount of money to spend for like eight trim pieces that we just replaced. But I actually bought more parts than just what you see here. A couple of new CV boots that will get done soon, as well as some pedal covers that we didn't install just yet. I'm gonna probably save these for a rainy day because these are beautiful and uh, there's nothing really wrong with them. I don't even know why I bought these. Pretty dumb on my part, really. So there you go. If you wanna spend about a thousand bucks on nonsensical trim parts and broken plastic, you could definitely do that. I got all this stuff from the dealership. It's still all available. I think some of that stuff was on back order, so it took a couple extra days but it is still all available. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again next time.